Hey everyone, and welcome to part 5 of my guide. So last time we finished off, we just formed Germany, so we kind of wanted to look at what the important part that Germany does real quick. Mainly, it's this admin efficiency, and that's kind of the whole way that we get world conquest, is we need high admin e efficiency. In our mission tree, we have this... I, I'm not even going to try to... Okay, I'm going to try to pronounce it. Kaiserich? I... Yeah, I, I shouldn't have tried. But basically, it's going to give you 5% admin efficiency until the end of the game. And to do it, you need to complete these three objectives. So, kind of this whole tree. So, you start off with just... Capital needs a courthouse. And that's... I think we built... started it last time. Just kidding, we didn't. So... We're going to start a courthouse in Berlin. And generally, it's a hard mission to complete. These ones are already done, usually. By the time I get here, I don't even know what they are. Basically, if you if you form Germany, you probably have these two, but this is the one that's annoying. You need 60 loyalty from the Junkers, and usually I get lucky. There's Usually there's all these garbage events that you see, and, you know, you just spam click them away, if you like me. But we're paying attention to one that gives loyalty to the Junkers. Let's talk about our main objectives now. The first thing we're going to focus on is getting this province here. This is, of course, for this great project Alhambra, and it's going to give you that an extra 5% admin efficiency. And of course we need to finish our tree. They changed this recently. You now have to have the most total development in the world, so you can't quite, you won't be able to quite get that until we surpass the Ottomans, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get there. Get that going. We're also starting to make some good money. I'm trying to decide the best way to get into a war with Spain. But before we go to war with Spain, we probably want to get some more guys. I'm going to recruit up to 200. Alright, we finished our mission here, and as I said, the other two are usually automatically complete. We just need to get that loyalty at some point. So until this time period, I don't really worry too much about lowering autonomy anymore. I like to have my nation be nice and stable, not dealing with many rebels anymore. For my sixth idea group, I'm going to pick defensive. The main reason why we want to pick defensive is because there's a policy that gives us negative 25 land attrition, and later on that's going to be super useful. I decided to directly war with Spain because there's no great war to pull them into. So I will be declaring this war. Pulling in my allies, and let's get going. I'll start off this war by trying to get Burgundy out. And now that we have finished our reforms, we're going to start doing this centralized state. And I just look for a pretty high one, like there's a 90 something, yeah, 98, and centralize as often as you can. You can pretty much do this for the rest of the game, so it's something that you, that you can kind of get repetitive to do, but it's not too bad. As mentioned earlier, my plan was to wipe Peace Burgundy, and I'm going to follow through with that. Generally, when you see a garrison like this with only 2,000 guys at this point, like, there's, you can easily just assault. Just don't assault if it's like 6,000. Again, you can see this is a super low garrison. So, we're hoping that the Ottoman siege like one province from. Portugal, because you need a, I need a fort to like get the provinces down there. And the reason is, is I want to take kind of take some land down in here because I want to get to snake my way down to Timbuktu because Timbuktu has one of the one of these great projects. It's pretty fantastic, and it's going to be negative ten tech cost. So from Portugal, I'm going to take a pathway to Sangai. And so yeah, I'm just going to take this, and that's good. So the important part in this war is we just take Granada. And that, depending on how greedy I want to be, that could be enough, right? My recommendation is if you can only take Granada, then do that. Like, don't over overstress yourself trying to get a bunch of stuff from Spain. Let's talk about what I would try to take from Spain, and this is all dependent on, you know, how your wars go. Eventually you'll have to attack Spain, most likely, to get Granada, and that's super important to do at this point in the game. Madrid's awesome. It's one of the great 
projects that you want and it has this covering cap bonus. Is it important to get right into the second? No, but it's kind of like, if I can, I should. And I kind of want to connect this eventually so I don't have to... If I own both sides of a channel like this, I can't get blocked by ships. And I am someone who's horrible at building navies. Don't worry, there will be no navy guide coming from me. Alright, I'm finally able to end this war with what I want. And I'm going to create this big weird snake, snaky path to make sure I get both of these great projects. And as well as connect down here to Timbuktu. And if your war you only got Granada, I would still consider that all you need. I'm going to leave 50 guys down here just to fight Timbuktu in a, in a bit here. And of course, save our money for this great project here first. I wanted to change my tier 9 government reform now to this negative 5 years of uh, separatism. Because we don't really need the hard street anymore. And just because you can make a state doesn't mean you should. In my, in my case, if I made states, I would just be... Basically a gov cap, so don't do that unless you can actually have the space to do it. So here I'm going to separate piece out from the Ottomans. The reason I don't care if if I do this is well, it costs 10 trust if you separate piece out. And I have full, I have tons of favors, way more than I would ever need, and tons of trust already. So, you know, I can just white piece out, and then if I really feel like I need to, go here and trade some favors trust. Sure. Then my trust is maxed again, and I still have 57 favors. And, of course, add a bonus of I don't have a long truce with Burgundy. So it was a white piece. So Francis broke alliance with me, which is fine. Eventually that was bound to happen. Let's see, if someone to die, what, what do they want? Um, at least one province in the... Algiers are owned by Germany. Okay. Where is that? Okay, that, that, that's doable. I'm just gonna do that now, actually. Oh, that was really bad choice. You can see what happens when you make these bad choices, probably in a mountain province, of course. And of course, this is a guide on what not to do, in this case. Oh look, I won the siege anyways. Cool, glad I threw away 25,000 men. I was just trying to give you an example of what, you know, what not to do. So, of course, I would never do that normally. Level 23 tech, we get plus 10% admin efficiency, so that's huge. And of course, we're now going to upgrade this Alhambra, however you say it. We're just going to use money to push it along. Alright. So now, that puts us at 80% admin efficiency, which is really good. And we still have another 5% to grow up here. So now I have all three plus five advisors, and that's probably something we'll continue to do the rest of the game. Now that we're kind of doing better financially. Alright, he'll finally end this war. And we got our objective done. We're going to complete this mission. All i got to do to get this now is just have more development than any other nation in the world. You want to have Diplotech 23 before we fight any big wars. We want to be at 80% absolutism when you get to that point. Of course, I'm already there. Just kind of give you a milestone of where you would want to be. I'm going to start spending some money on courthouses, which I'll be doing for the rest of the game. we go to war with Songhai to get Timbuktu. And sometimes you can use this autonomous siege thing. It's kind of convenient. It's like, okay, just keep sieging those things, the provinces out. Kind of is like lazy mode, it doesn't, it's not going to be optimal, but I like it. Keep doing the centralization, remember you're in a constant fight against this government capacity. That's the one. 
Keep building town halls everywhere. Normally I would say, like, just get Timbuktu and leave it. In this case, it's like, I don't have anything better to do. I'm kind of waiting for this anyways. I'm going to build some ch some uh, transport ships. Mostly I'm doing this to dream about <laughs> that I could uh, possibly sneak onto Great Britain's land. Sometimes he's busy in the New World and stuff, so you can catch him off guard and just be able to land your troops. I really want to push for my idea though, for, like really soon, because having that negative attrition by 25% is huge, especially when if you're like me and you're not very good at managing large armies. Okay, so I'm trying to cut a path to eventually get to Congo. This is because there's another of these technology great projects. This one's not quite as good, it only gives you 5%, but you also only need level 2. So I'm kind of just snaking down there a bit. So where are we at with this? Okay, we can actually get it now, so we don't need to worry, I guess, about getting that tech cost right now. So here we go. We are now going to have our Imperialism CB. What we do want to do is probably recruit a few more guys. We want to have at least 200 to fight Russia. We have kind of 50 locked away down in Africa now. We're going to Probably use some money to just build more town halls. And I'd recommend an auto clicker at some point, because this will get really tedious. Alright, so now we can finish defense for these when we get this policy here. It's going to give us negative 25% land attrition. Really powerful. So now I'm going to be fighting the Netherlands and Russia in a moment. So I'm planning to just Take care of the Netherlands quickly. Remember, always go imperialism from here on out. Call the Ottomans and let's do it. So when you fight this war, in my particular case, the Ottomans are super powerful. I'm kind of just going to let them do the heavy lifting while I deal with the Netherlands, who are surprisingly strong. I'm going to take a good chunk from the Netherlands here. Alright, we're going to take a gamble here and hopefully he doesn't kill my guys. I'm going to park my ships in the middle of the water here. And force march across if I can. Alright, let's bless it. I mean, it's across the water. Quickly siege out London. These forts all kind of suck, so I'm just going to assault them like an animal. Alright, I'm going to peace out Great Britain and this is great. I'm going to actually take London. And everything he has mainland. I'm gonna go ahead and end this war, and I want to take a bunch of these low dev things provinces out here because it's easy for me to siege these provinces, but it's much more annoying for me to have to siege these. So basically, I just don't want to take these because they're worth a lot in the war, in the next war, basically. So I noticed I completed this mission here. Kaiser Reich, probably butchering the fascination of that, but it's going to give me plus 5% avid efficiency until the end of the game. So that puts me up to 85%, which I'm hoping will negate this overextension. Let's see. Yep, you see that huge shift from that 5%. So now that we reached our goal of getting that 85%, out efficiency. It's kind of just going to be about finding good wars to conquer a lot of land. I would avoid taking provinces that the Ottomans want if you don't want to fight them yet. Totally up to you. I will, you will have to fight them eventually, of course. This is a world conquest. For this great project, you're going to have to accept Castilian culture. Now you can upgrade it. It's quite a good one. It gives you some government capacity. Going to attack Burgundy now. Of course, always use Imperialism. I actually decide I'm going to take 100 guys to the New World and uh, siege out Brittany a bit more. I have to siege out his colonies to kind of make this war happen. 
So as a result of me going over to the New World and sieging out, I'm able to... I'm able to get Brittany to be my vassal. And the reason it has to be vassals, he has these provinces here and there's no way for me to take them. And the way that the colonial nations work is if you annex the overlord, the colonies will go to me. Then the same goes if you take every province. So in this case, I can't take every province because of the distance, so I will have to annex him later on. I'm not going to fully annex Burgundy and Hungary, and I'm going to give the Ottomans like two provinces that they occupy, I don't really care. I have my um, start of my first colonies over here, even though they're not mine yet. They'll obviously still fight for me in wars. What the fuck? So I've randomly been called into this war here. I guess I'll call the Ottomans in. I don't know if I'll be able to get the war goal. It's some bullshit colony. <laughs> Whatever. Alright. I wanted to uh, mention centralizing state one more time, and then I don't want to mention it anymore. Just, you're going to keep doing it. All the time. I'm going to go take a few provinces from Spain. And the, the problem with this is it's not the right CB, like it was his war that he declared. But I'm going to attack him when this, when this is up, and hopefully do, do some good damage to him later on. Just gonna leave a hundred guys over here, which kind of sucks, but they're gonna be important later. And upgrade Madrid for this increased gov cap. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the episode here. I think we made some good progress today. We still have this pretty high ammo efficiency, which is awesome. And that will go down a little bit when the age ends, before it goes to its max of 90. And please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and have a nice one.